decreased net income. Now we will record the other side. We're going to the other side. That's going to be miscellaneous. That's going to be the checking account. That's our first account on the trial balance, of course. Scrolling down to the checking account, the next area in the checking account is in AN26. So we are in AN26 and 26. And we're going to select equals, scroll up just a bit, and point to that 80 and enter. And that brings the balance down in the checking account, 94,357. If we scroll back up, here's the 94,357 uh, there. We're going to do the same for the next item. So I'm going to go back to the third tab to find this. We're going to the third tab. And the next item we need to record is the bank service charge. So once again, it's going to decrease the checking account. We know that because we need to adjust the checking account. And the other side will go to some expense called bank service charges. So let's do that. I'm going to go back to the first tab. Back to the first tab. We're going to record this again as of 131 because it was for the first bank reconciliation. And then we're going to say the checking account is going down. Here's the checking account. has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down, doing the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. So copying the checking, putting that on the bottom of the date in V12. Right click and paste. One, two, three. We're going to indent that, go into the Home tab, go into the Alignment group, and increase the indentation. We're then in cell X12. I'm going to make the credit of 15. We'll debit something then for 15. And it's going to be an expense, and it's going to be bank service charges. Now note that some companies might not have an expense called bank service charge because it's too small, and they might just put it into miscellaneous expense or something like that. Uh, I like to put it into a bank service charge and know what exactly those charges are to the bank. So here's the expense account. It has a debit balance. It goes up in the debit direction as all expenses do. So we will do the same thing to it and debit it, copying the bank service charges, scrolling back up and putting that in V11, right click and paste one, two, three. There's our journal entry. I'm going to make it uh, yellow again, highlighting the fact that this is something that was entered after the closing process, which could cause us problems. We then have the bank balance or the bank service charges. Uh, we're going to post that to the general ledger. Here's the account on the trial balance. It's going to be in the same order on the general ledger. Let's find the bank service charges. We have the assets. We have the liabilities. And then we have the equity. We're looking for bank service charge. So let's scroll up just a bit. Don't see it there. Here it is. It's in BK39, so we are in BK39. We will select equals. We're gonna scroll up just a bit and point to that 15. Let's do that now. Scrolling back down, we are in BK39. We're selecting equals, scrolling up just a bit and pointing to that 15 and enter. So there's the bank service charge. We should find that on the trial balance as well. Scrolling back to the trial balance, all the way back to the trial balance and scrolling back up we see that uh, the 15 is here, bringing net income down, and we're out of balance by 15. Now we're going to record the checking account. Here's the checking account. Here's the checking account on the trial balance. We will be in the next open area. That's going to be right here in AN27. We will select equals, scroll up just a bit, and point to that 15. So in AN27 equals, we're scrolling up just a bit and pointing to that 15 and enter. Now we're going to see what the effect is on the financial statements. So in order to do that, we see that we adjusted the checking account here. So I'm going to go ahead and point to that on the financial statements. And we see that we also made an adjustment to two expenses, one to the bank service charges. I'll point that to the financials. And we made an adjustment as well to miscellaneous. So we'll point that to the financials. I'm then going to unfreeze the pane, so we'll scroll up to the top, and we'll go to the View tab, and the Windows group, and the panes freeze, unfreeze the panes. Then we'll take a scroll to the right, we're going to look at what happened to the financial statements. Scrolling all the way to the right, taking a scroll to the right, we see the financial statements on columns BW through CC, and we see that cash has changed, and note that we also see that the equity has changed. So equity is something that has been updated now, and that's really what the problem is because really we have already closed out this um, financial statement. If we had already closed this out, if we had already generated the report and given it to somebody, then this uh, ending balance here in the equity, the equity as of the point in time 
of January 31st should be the beginning balance for February. And what we have done now is adjust this ending balance after it has been closed, which will give us a problem in terms of our beginning balance for the next month. So that's really why uh, we need to really be careful when we make these adjustments to QuickBooks or some accounting software for a prior time period. Software like QuickBooks really allows us to do that. Uh, however, it causes us problems if we had printed the report and we're going back to the reports and trying to say, hmm, our, our retained earnings doesn't tie out. Uh, how does that happen in detail? Well, we see that we made adjustments to 15 to the, to the expenses and 80 to the expenses. And we see that that is part of net income. Net income is revenue minus expenses. And remember, this is for the month of January. And therefore, that net income is going to be part of the statement of owner's equity calculation. Here's our beginning balance. Here's the investments. This number then is now different than it was when we had already closed out the books, when we already issued the financial statements at the end of January. And therefore, this change is going to change that beginning balance. And that then changes the ending balance. That's why our ending balance now for equity is now different. To see this problem more clearly, let's take a look at the closing worksheet. This is our closing process worksheet. We're going to go to this next worksheet. And remember the closing process, what we did is we said we're going to close out all of the income statement accounts to equity. And in so doing, we will then 